Hi everyone and thank you for watching this new video related to the Moose framework for DCS World. In this video I'm going to explain you something really exciting and that is how you handle events, namely DCS simulation events that are occurring within the simulator and handle them to the DCS objects for processing. So as you already know when you design missions using the Moose framework, you're actually uh, instantiating objects uh, using the new constructor of various classes like set unit, group, set database, missile trainer, spawn. And there are also wrapper classes that are automatically instantiated within the Moose framework that are wrapping the, um, the DCS objects like a unit wrapper object or a group wrapper object. So the challenge is that when you run your mission, that within the mission various events are occurring, like a plane can shoot a weapon, a missile to another plane, a ground unit can start shooting its guns, a ground unit can die, a plane can get hit, a plane can land, a new ground object can be instantiated using the spawn class. A plane can crash into the ground. A system on a human flown plane can fail. So the challenge is, while these events are occurring, how can we get those events being populated into those moose objects here and process them? Make sure that those events if there's any process processing to be done within one of those objects, that one of those events that are occurring can be populated and can be properly processed within those objects that you have instantiated within your running mission. And there's a very nice concept created to do that. And I'm going to create various demos to demonstrate what is possible with this kind of system. So the key core object that is orchestrating the, um, the correct uh, broadcasting of the events occurring within the DCS simulation within your mission towards those objects is called the event dispatcher object. And you won't really use the event dispatcher with, while you are designing your missions because the event dispatcher is, a, is something that is hidden behind within the Moose framework handling those events in a proper way and there's an interface defined that you can use to actually in a very easy way um, subscribe unsubscribe to the events so you can set up event handling for the objects that you want to event handle for you can subscribe to an event you can unsubscribe to an event and you can create what we call event handling methods that allow you to build logic when an event is occurring. The events occurring within the mission um, have been uh, structured in an event structure that contains different event IDs for each possible event within the DCS simulation. For those that are familiar with the DCS API, I have taken the liberty to severely simplify the naming of those events. So there's a new events structure like a type and behind those events different event names are listed each, each containing a proper event ID. So this is the set. Let me repeat. You got an event dispatcher object that is dispatching the events from the simulation towards the correct objects that are being subscribed to the event and that are processing the events. And the events occurring within the DCS simulation can be identified using a new event structure that contains different event names and IDs of those events that you want to subscribe to. So let's get a bit more into detail on what the event handling concept is about. Let's dive first into what the event dispatcher class or object is doing. 
So the, the event the event dispatcher is handling the dispatching of the DCS events occurring in the simulator to the subscribed objects in the correct processing order. And the correct processing order is something really important I need to explain. So as I explained, the event structure contains different kinds of IDs that identify the different events that are occurring within the DCS simulation. And by the way, these are documented within the framework. So when an event is occurring, that event will be sent automatically to the event dispatcher. And then depending on which object that is subscribed to that event, that event will receive then the event notification so that an event handling method can be called. There are various types of objects within Moose. And it's really important to understand this, that the database is the core of everything. The database contains the wrapper classes for units, the wrapper, sorry, excuse me, the wrapper objects for the different units alive within your mission, the wrapper objects called, um, derived from group, you know, of all the groups alive in your mission, all the airbases, all the clients or players alive within your mission, etc. And that database is continuously updated. The database object already contains the required subscriptions to the different events that are important to keep the database up to date online. So you don't need to do anything with database. But when you look into the code of database, and maybe you, you want to do that once, you'll see different subscriptions of various events here that are ensuring that the database object is always up to date with the latest missions, uh, sorry, with the latest events that have occurred within your mission. The same with sets. Sets are subsets of databases. So you want to ensure that, for example, when a new unit is created, right, a birth event, that that birth event is being dispatched to your set unit object so that the new unit can be added onto the set dynamically. The birth event um, can also then be populated to the unit object that has been created within the database. So that unit object here, when it is subscribed, will receive that birth event and you can then process your own logic of what that birth event means for that unit. For example, it can send a message like, I am alive to the coalition, etc. Same for group. And then there are other objects that are not related to groups, units, set unit database, but these can also receive the different events occurring within your mission. Okay? So you see there is an order of things. And when certain events are occurring, and I mean certain, there's a subset of events that you, you see that, you know, the order of those events that are occurring are starting with updating the database. So you want to first ensure that the dispatcher updates the database correctly. Then the sets will be updated correctly. Then the unit objects will be handled, then the group objects will be handled, and then the other objects will be handled. And this layering is automatically done by the event dispatcher. So you don't, again, don't need to do anything, but you need to understand that the event dispatcher is ensuring that when an event occurs, that your objects within your mission are correctly populated in the right order. For example, when a birth event happens, you don't want to first process the group object event handling process because the database won't be yet populated with a new birth event. Okay, so this is this is really important to, to keep in mind. This process is happening. Now, the order is also important because there are certain events which require an order in a different process, in a different order, in, in a reverse order. So when a crash happens, when a plane crashes, 
you want to ensure that first you process the uh, that crash event within all the subscribed normal objects then you want to process that crash event within your group objects that have been subscribed you want to process the crash uh, event within the unit objects that, that have been subscribed and then you want to update the set and basically a crash event will delete that unit or group from the sets that you have subscribed to and then finally the crash event will then automatically delete those groups or units from the database and clean it up okay so this is really important the event dispatcher is a complex module that does all of this for you okay keep in mind you still don't need to do anything it sounds complicated but it really is not but I want you to understand what's happening in the background yeah okay let's go into event handling then so when an event is occurring right you and these events are being populated to the different objects here you can set you can subscribe to the events and then you can write different event handling methods that are being attached to the objects that are receiving the events so it's very simple when you have an events.shot and you want to subscribe and create an event handling method you create a function called base or spawn or any other object that you have in mind and then you write the syntax on events and then shot event data same here events hit the object name on event hit event data and what will happen is that this function that is being defined within your object will automatically be called passing an event data structure which contains information about the event that has occurred and the information that is being passed to the event handling method is very rich for the generic objects each object will receive the event occurring so when you crash each object will receive a crash event that is being subscribed to the crash using the on crash on event crash uh, method okay so when we talk about units however because events are specifically designed for units so for example when you, when, a, when a hit event occurs the event data will contain the unit that is being hit right so when you are assigning events to a unit object then the event will directly be directed to the right unit object that is being subscribed so no other object will receive it this is really important to understand really nice actually so when you are subscribing unit objects to certain events then if the event occurs the event will be directed automatically to the right unit object so other unit objects will not receive the event okay same for group when a hit event occurs right then and a group is subscribed to the hit event then that group will receive the hit event and no other groups okay so enough theory um, this gives you an overview of what kind of information is within the event data variable that is being passed to the event handling function so lots of stuff here and you can use the IntelliSense within the LDT to explore the different meanings of those uh, fields for the moment I'm, I'm keeping that open so when you process the event you can use those fields to identify which group you can use the unit directly the wrapper class that is being populated automatically and use the methods within the wrapper class so this is this is important to understand that the moose event handling already provides you with a filled up structure 
a rich structure, so you don't need to do a lot of additional processing within each event handling function. It is already done for you in the background by the Moose framework. Okay? So let me get quickly to a demo because that really will explain better what this all means. Okay? Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.